but this is about as tight as a squeeze as I can physically do. And I don't know if I can get my gear through here. It's the problem. Is I've made it just about as big as me. Yeah. But I'm going to try to go through here. My belly is now touching the... My belly is now touching the... Uh, My belly's touching the surface, but it's okay if I pull through. If I'm just real gentle, Let's see if I can get my light. Woo, it's too far. Ah, ah. I got my long arms coming back through. Oh, I think that's just wonderful. That's wonderful. See my gear here. Uh, uh, trying to get my gear through also. Doesn't want to come through very easily. A very cold good morning to you. And I'm out here today uh, shooting follow-up video. So it's just like a Hollywood production. Jacob and I will, uh, we go out a lot, right? We go caving, we find small caves, we find interesting stuff, we look for big caves. And it's not every single time out that we find something crazy. So that's where you get us uh, just filming and having a good time on the second channel. But if we find something that's super amazing and, or something happens or I get lost or uh, any of the number of the things that you've seen happen on the main channel, once that takes place, then we know, okay, this is a good story and a good adventure and we can make a little movie out of it, which we like to do. Usually that means that once we get the footage home, the video home, and I start looking at it, I realize, okay, there's some plot holes missing if we're going to create a story that's a watchable video. I'm the one that returns to the mountain, usually to the same area, and I will go get footage which fills in the gaps so that uh, the video itself is uh, a, a watchable storyline. Jacob goes back with me too sometimes, but usually like today he's at school. So we went over the weekend, we found a new cave. It was totally awesome and amazing. And I decided that uh, I better return <clears throat> and get some uh, B-roll footage of the trees and everything, just so there's some surrounding footage uh, this is a fun one. This is a, a big, uh, a known cave in the area. And we were hiking. There was a lady hiking. This is a hiking area. And most people, they see these things, they have no idea it's a cave or what a cave is. And so we showed her the cave and she was thrilled. And she was, she started, she was singing in the cave. It's got a nice echo. Yeah. yeah. It goes both directions. It goes that way too. Not as far. She didn't have light, so we showed her. Wow, that really goes down there. Tree casts. That's a doozy. Yeah, some of those lead to big caves. There are some cave systems below the tree casts. Animals do fall in those from time to time. And uh, you find a lot of animal carcasses in them. So what I'm gonna try to do is to show you me while I'm shooting some of the b-roll setting up the cameras getting the extra shots hopefully that works okay all right how's that working it's certainly better so I'm gonna crawl through this this is we, we crawled this the other day but uh, we the footage just was corrupted from that which was you know gravely disappointing the fact of the matter is I can barely fit, but I know that I can, so I'll go back through it a couple times, and then that footage will go on the main video. But this will not be uh, historically pleasant. In fact, I suspect this will be my doom if I'm not extra careful. Lots of light coming through because the entrance you can see down there, no problem. So that's pretty cool. 
actually it's kind of pretty right there too. With this, I'm gonna get some video of that. Okay, so I'm gonna find a place to set up the big camera. I don't remember this being so uh, de-elevated and I don't have my tripod for this. So I have to set it up up here, which is okay. It's just, you know, everything is, uh, it's pretty tough. Okay, that should be good there. No, I need you to stay on, buddy. It's such a pain. We'll get to it. Okay. And how about you? Can you see? Oh, my battery's almost all dead already. That don't make no sense. You're going to be kind of bright. I'm going to have to crawl through twice. Both times. Will suck. All right. Here we go. This is maximum tightness take one. I was gonna run around the cave and go back in this side, but I think both squeezes will look cool. And both times. That's not a problem at all. Losing my pants. That's fine. Oh, what a squeeze. Okay, so now I come back through and I'll narrate. And then I have to check the lighting. Maybe do it a few times. So that was a little easier for Jacob than it's going to be for me. Uh, we took a look at this. And uh, Jacob, you might have to pull me through. The uh, the ceiling to floor ratio here is pretty low. I need to be able to see where my best spot is. And it's actually going off this way. If I get in trouble, I'll have to dive low. And that's okay. But uh, you can see that here I'm fine. And once I get about right here, both sides are touching, so this is a true squeeze, is what we call it. It's a true squeeze when uh, you're actually squeezing your body through, and uh, I have to try to take a breath here, breathe out, and then uh, my clothes are pretty caught. So I move in a different direction to free the clothes. You do this back and forth to free your clothes. And I'm fighting it, but I'm not panicking because I know I can make it. So I come up uh, and out like such and thus. No problem. No problem. Woo! Yeah. And now you get a glimpse of the big camera of how we make that squeeze. Now I gotta check the big camera to make sure the results are okay. The uh, hard part about caving is taking your gear, but you always only have the choice to take the gear or leave the gear. And you can make the cave easy, but then you don't share it with a single other person. But you take your gear and you can share the, a little bit of the cave. That's it, there's no other options. So we usually take our gear but it does uh, have its challenges. I didn't bring my uh, helmet in here. And now that I'm here, I, I probably should have, just for the sake of not having to hold a light. It's another object to have to hold as I try to trace through this cave. But the entrance is about 20 feet up in front of me. It's a nice little tube here. And these tubes I can race through about a mile a minute, man. I can just crack through these things, but uh, not with my hands occupied and filming. It's just, 
It just is a labor of love, but it's a slow labor. The three difficult things about filming, well, the three things I think about right now that are difficult about filming is uh, one, you have to take your gear with you so there's weight and hands being full. Two, when you're holding the camera, you have to do so in a steady manner and so like a lot of your balance and everything is given up because you're trying to hold the camera. And three, the light has to be in your face. That means you can't see where you're going. So whenever we're filming, we can't see where we're going. We're holding equipment in our arms so we can't use them and we're not balancing correctly because we're trying to balance the camera. And those are like the three main things that make paving doable and we take those away from ourselves and then you got a whole new challenge and you can get frustrated because you're making it difficult for yourself and you just think I don't need this in my life and that's what most people do is they, they don't want the extra challenge it's hard enough so I'm feeling that today but ouch it's also a b-roll day so I've already been here I've already explored I already know what's here there's no more excitement of a brand new cave but uh, it'll be fun when I get home and I'm making the video and now I have the transitional points that I can use instead of being like, oh man, I wish we would've got that. I don't need my light no more. Cause that. Is the entrance. That camera just not gonna stay today. It's a non-cooperative camera. That's all right. Okay, that's a nice little section. Ah. Ah. What a nightmare. I guess I can leave this here because I gotta go down to our our dugs, our digged section next. This will not be because this is off. We're not going to use any lights yet. This guy. This glove. Pack in here. Step. Shoelaces are another problem. It's just. It is. There's not gear solution. What I'm doing here is I'm looking at this, this flow here where in a lava flow on these hills, you get these, uh, these bubbled up areas. You can't see it as easily on the camera as I can, but it, it bubbles up and then I look for a way in. Now you can see the, the roundedness right there. That's a bubble on the landscape and this landscape has this. So see this, this uh, thing right there? That is a cave underneath, a little one. So what you hope for is an entrance, and then once you find an entrance, a way in, you see if you can connect it. And sometimes they connect, and then they'll dive underground to a big cave. That's usually not the case, but this is what we're always doing. This rut here is where a cave has collapsed. Could be that this is the cave. Could be that this was the round cave here that collapsed. I love these runners. They're fun. They're usually awful, but... Just need to find a way. And this will be too small because it's about body size out here, so inside will be much smaller. But so now I just look for entrances to any of these bubbles. Uh, this this volcanic landscape is particularly wild. You're, there's maybe none like this in the world that uh, has such a density of caves. So I'm just walking up on this, and I see this very steep pit. Uh oh. Wow. 
That is steep. Well, gear up, Sandusky. We're going in. Uh, so this is a very scary entrance. One that uh, some people might want to use ropes for, but I'll let you watch me going in there. This thing really dives straight down. Oh, I see it's got plenty of footholds. That's not a problem. Not a problem at all. All these footholds. But I do need to shorten me up because... Uh, Nice twilight area. I'll show you some red rocks. There's some nice red rocks up under here, which is uh, red rocks occur as a uh, way that the chemicals react to the rocks over time. That is not great. That looks like that dive ends pretty quick. I doubt if anyone goes in there. But I'm not anyone. Oh, I see. It's like a mudslide. Have to be very careful down here. It does dive below the earth, but you can see that it's filled up with uh, rubble and such because uh, it's the bottom of a mudslide. So that's pretty cool. There is some trash down there. It looks like people just throw stuff in there for entertainment value, which is understandable. It does seem entertaining. Once I get in there. Well, uh, it would have to be dug out. <laughs> it's a little too dangerous. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. It dives down in there. Uh, it just goes to a, a hole that's got a little crack, but it's just full of dirt. I'd have to dig, 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 but it's really steep in here. I'll go outside and I'll look at the, the landscape. You never know until you look. Uh, and until you look, you can't really consider it looked in. So it's just not, it's just not, not the day. I was just looking at this collapse here and you could see that it was a bubble. I'm, I'm on a, uh, a, a uh, developed trail here. Uh, as by the parking lot, but you can see this how it's collapsed. It's very obvious and I was like, oh, yes The tunnel so this demonstrates uh, a neat It's an interpretive hike, but it shows how the lava forms and hardens. I'll read it the glowing spilled The glowing flow spilled down the gray flanks of the mountain into gullies and ravines air cooled the molten surface forming an insulating roof of rock above the scarring streams of lava. They do a good job writing. Tunnels like this allow the lava to flow far into the forested valleys. Next one. The eruption subsided and the lava drained from the crusty tunnel. Without support, the cooling rock, the cooling roof cracked, slumped, and collapsed. And there it is. Life beside an active volcano is challenged to endure. A forest stands today where a forest has stood before. Imagine how this scene would change if lava flowed here again. Well, lava can flow here because <laughs> the mountain is rather active. It's uh, one of the few volcanoes uh, that still just spews smoke and lava, hot lava, all the time. It's contained to the crater, but uh, in the early 80s it erupted and, and actually filled a lot of these caves with sand, which we've talked about. But that's pretty neat. And that is an entrance to a tiny little cave. Okay. Now, you want to go up over here? No, no, no. Yeah. Hang on, I'm going to turn that up. I'm not pulling yet, I'm not pulling yet. I can see better without your finger there. Oh, no. Okay, now give me a big gap. Oh, oh man. Oh, my gosh, y'all are the best people <laughs> in the you world. You got it? Yeah. And they say Texas people are nice, man. Y'all are the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. I gotta, hey, see, I gotta see the little guy. See how we go. Wow, look at you, man. You wanna call your Hi. husband and let him know we got yes. it too? It's about time. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, all of you. Poor little guy. He says, Mommy, don't do that again. Go quiet. That thing worth the money you pay for it already. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna get one of those now. I just thought Tony Where's would be mom? the first one we'd use it all. <laughs> Yeah, lots of there. Yeah. You want to get out for a minute? <laughs> Did you walk that off? Way to come through, Dallas. Right. 
You this did guy, so this guy did it. Good, good skills there, bud. Would you end up hitting the button on the key? No, we pulled the keys out. We pulled the keys out. Oh, you did get them. Yeah. I didn't think you would. Yeah, we, we, with the extra length. Oh, yeah. What would you do with that tool? I thought maybe we could take the end off and come from this side and hit the button. That was my next suggestion. For the more professional, highly edited videos, please visit our main channel, Caveman Hikes. And we will see you underground. Yeah, we could add we can add an unboxing later. I just yeah. I wanna play with that. Yeah. Dude, I got one today. I got one today that had like it was a very small gift in a very large box and the rest was I don't you'll have to take a you'll have to look at it. It's not what you think it is. Is it a shrinkums? We don't know what it is. It's a shrinkums. It's a it's um East Hill Outdoors again. Yeah, it's a what? It's, Thank you guys. It's this company that keeps sending us. Yeah, companies are sending us East like, Hills Outdoors. Don't ask them to say stuff twice. I'll say something. East Hill. This company this company keeps sending us free yeah, stuff. Yeah, like here, a sleeping bag. Oh. Yeah. This That's a high out. Because are they sponsoring you? We said we will not accept sponsors. We will use your stuff. We will throw it away. We will do as we please. They just keep sending us stuff. I won't take a sponsor. Tell him, Jacob. He won't. Because then you have, then you're required on they your channel. They have like a weird contract. Well, I know this stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like in this video, sponsor by Great Channel. Yeah. That's yeah. not out of our. That's not us. That's YouTube. Just right in the way. This is a video of Dan's butt now. There we go. Okay. Dad, Dan. Oh, we tried. Yeah. That is not okay, so Jacob, what it is? It is a it is a hammock liner. It is designed to go inside a hammock oh, if you want to sleep winter sleep. I, it's just specialized gear. That is awesome. Only thing I did was ask for the bright colors. It doesn't have a zipper. Inside is neon orange. Oh, and it's got hammock liner. It's a hammock liner. So that's why I brought the hammock. Well, it's it's good as a sleeping bag. It's basically a sleeping bag that's brought to a point on the end so that it will so it sit correctly in a, sleep, in a yeah, hammock. Yeah, and it doesn't freeze you to death because the air is... Well, that's great. Well, no, you'll be hot in there. We could both fit in there. So it's down, which means Jacob it's very light, weighs one eight. pound. Jacob will never touch it again. And it's warm. It's a hammock under quilt. Right. I don't know what that... We, does that say under quilt? It does say under quilt. We don't... Hammock under quilt. It's very warm. That will keep you hot. Who, is that downfield? Yeah, it is. Who makes it? East Hill Outdoors. Why is it like... It's made to go in a hammock. In a hammock. So you, Situation oh, here. Oh, look, I have Jacob's head. There's a hammock there. There is a. Did they send the hammock too? No, I, I have that. So that goes inside a hammock. Okay. That's what it's designed for. Pull it tight. Pull it tight. Huh. Dan, there's there, Dan, there's a hammock yeah. there. There's Jacob. Jacob's head. I don't know what to do with this. So, Ryan, hang on, Gracie, can you tell us what it's like? Give us a review. Oh, I feel like a burrito. No, oh, you're it's over, over that way. way. It's comfortable. There you go. Is it warm? Yes, it's very warm. Are you warm enough? Yes. Do you, do you feel like this would be a good thing for people to buy? <laughs> don't, don't do it. Oh, I see. It's it, The whole thing bundles up. Like a cocoon. She's going to come out and be a beautiful, beautiful moth. Then you pick her up by her legs. You can, yeah. you can sense it. Except yeah. Run down the stairs, please. She weighs like 280. Oh, there we go. Oh, come on. Yeah, come on. throw over the stairs. Yeah. This was a bad decision. I thought it was going to watch, like, rap. John Cena! Do you remember when you would go shopping at places and you'd say, Can I have a box? You're right, buddy. I can narrate. That's true, they would. Now they charge.